Markdown can help you write online faster and more efficiently. Hi there, my name is Brian Collins. Welcome to the Become a Writer Today channel. I've been writing online with Markdown for years. It's a fantastic skill to learn because you can use it across most writing applications. In this video, I'm going to give you a primer into what Markdown is and how you can use it to format your articles. And I'll also give you a peek into my writing process. I'll show you how we come up with ideas for articles, arrange them and format them with Markdown, edit the results and then publish it on Substack and WordPress and other sites that I run. Now, first up, a quick primer. So if you visit markdownguide.org at any time, you can find any of the syntax or commands that you use to write with Markdown. Now I'll explain exactly how these work in a few moments. But suffice to say, these will work across any writing application because they almost all support Markdown. However, there are a couple of writing apps that are specifically good at it. Now in another video on this channel, I profile the best Markdown writing apps that are out there. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to focus on Obsidian, which is a writing application that I use for arranging my research and my ideas. And I'm also going to focus on Ulysses, which is a Markdown editor. You don't have to use either tool. That's the beauty of Markdown. It's basically a file that sits on your computer and you can open it up with any Markdown writing app. But using these tools will help you get an insight into my exact writing and publishing process. Now, before I show you a finished article and how I took it from an idea to something that was published, let me give you a quick primer on how all of this syntax works. On the left-hand side of the screen, I have Markdown syntax that I commonly use in articles that I write online. On the right hand side of the screen, I have a preview of what the final output will look like. In other words, when it's published in WordPress or as a PDF or Substack or Medium or wherever. So it's pretty easy to learn the basics. So you can use one hashtag, two hashtag or three hashtags to apply headings and subheadings. So one hashtag for H1, two hashtags for H2, three hashtags for H3 and so on. When you're writing body text or body copy, just simply write as normal. Sometimes writers will use formatting tricks and techniques to keep readers' attention for longer, like italics and bold. Pretty easy to do with Markdown. One asterisk before and after the word or sentence for italics and two for bold. Or alternatively, uh, you can also use an underscore. So one underscore for italics and two underscores for bold before and after the word. Sometimes when I'm writing an article, I like to leave myself a comment check this statistic, check this quote, but I don't want the comments to appear in the final output. To do that, I'll simply use two percentage symbols, and then you will see that this test comments does not appear in the final output. If you want to reference some code in your article for some reason, not something I do often, then you just simply use this symbol and it will open up a uh, code block, and then you can put in any HTML that you want without having to worry about uh, WordPress or wherever it is that you're publishing rendering the code. Now, perhaps my favorite markdown command is the shortcut for adding URLs. So you simply put in a square bracket before the words you want to hyperlink and after it. And then you put in a round bracket and paste in your URL and it will automatically add the URL. I regularly cite interviewees for my articles. Uh, if your quote is quite long, it's nice to break it up with a block quote. So you use the greater than symbol to format it as a block quote. You can add footnotes relatively easily in Obsidian or with Markdown. So to do it, just type in whatever text you want to add a footnote to. So this is a sample footnote. Then you're going to type in the uh, circumflex symbol immediately after the letter. And then you're going to put in a square bracket and type in this is the text of my first footnote. And then if I go over to the right hand side, you can see it's added a numbered footnote. I'm going to click on this. It will add the footnote at the bottom of the article. One markdown command that's specific to Obsidian is the ability to add highlights. So to do that, you simply type in the equals symbol twice before and after the text, and it automatically highlights the text in question. Now, again, I don't use this much, but it could be useful if you're writing nonfiction. That is a, an Obsidian specific use case. So you might not be able to do that in every markdown writing app. Sometimes you all want to put in a divider in my articles. So to do that, simply type this symbol uh, tr three times and it will automatically add a line break or a divider. In Obsidian and other Markdown apps, you can easily add bullet point lists. So to do it, simply use the asterisk symbol or the dash symbol, 
Or if you want to uh, create a numbered list, just simply write one, two, three, and it would automatically format it as a bullet point list. So let me show you an example. So item one, item two, and I did that by simply using the asterisk key. If you're in Obsidian, you can also create checklists pretty easily. So you can press Command L or Control L to turn any of these items into a checklist that you can then tick off. And then if you want to remove the checklist, you can just press delete. Or alternatively, you can use uh, these keyboard commands and then it will automatically create a checklist item as well that you can tick on or off. Probably not gonna use that as much if you're writing an article, but it is good to know that if you're gonna use Obsidian specifically, but it doesn't work across every Markdown app. It's possible to create tables with Markdown too. Sometimes it can be a bit clunky depending on the app that you're using, but Obsidian has a plugin called Advanced Tables that I recommend installing. So simply visit Community Plugins, click Browse, and then just type in Tables, and then install and activate this plugin. Once you've installed the plugin, it's pretty easy to create your table with Markdown. So type the pipe symbol, and then you're going to put in the first heading for your table. So column heading one, then press the tab key, and then you're gonna put in column heading two, press the tab key, column heading three, and so on until you have all of the relevant headings in your table. And you can see the preview on the right hand side. Now to add items, just simply press enter. So item one, and press the tab key to navigate item two, item three. Now, to be honest, it's still a little bit slower than using a spreadsheet to create a table, but you can see how it could be useful if you wanted to have a table to go along with your article that you can then subsequently publish. Here is an article that I wrote recently about generative art. It's published on a WordPress site, and I also published it on a Substack newsletter. Now, before I show you exactly how I got the article from Markdown onto my site and newsletter, let me just explain my writing and research workflow briefly. So when I'm researching, you know, a kind of complicated article like this one, I'll spend a couple of days or weeks reading articles and listening to podcasts about the topic. And I'll capture notes inside of what's called a Zettelkasten. Zettelkasten isn't software, it's a system for capturing notes as you go. Now for the purposes of this video, you don't really need to understand it, but suffice to say, it involves just taking small notes about ideas that you come across, forming natural connections between them, reviewing your notes regularly, and then writing something based on all of your notes. And I do all of this with markdown files that are stored on my computer. And I take the notes with an app called Obsidian, which I've reviewed elsewhere on the channel and profiled in detail. And then I write the articles with an app called Ulysses. Now the apps aren't too important. Because you're using markdown, you can do this, or what I'm about to show you with any markdown app, or even with some basic text or rich text editors that support markdown but I'm gonna show you exactly how I got this article from a series of small or atomic ideas into something that I was happy to publish. My writing workflow works like this. On the right-hand side of the screen, I have an article that I wrote about generative art. It took me several weeks to write and research this article. On the left-hand side of the screen, I have various atomic or small notes that I used to research this article. So every time I read an interview about generative art, or every time I listen to a podcast about the topic or came across an interesting article online, I take a small or atomic note and capture it with Obsidian in my Zettelkasten. So this is one example of an atomic note. It's just a brief summary of what is generative art based on an, a, an interview that, or an article that I read on Medium. Here is another example of an atomic note. This is about the history of generative art based on a couple of interviews that I came across online. And I've also interlinked each of these notes so I can quickly reference them and navigate backwards and forwards and trace my steps. And you'll see that I always put in the original source in case I need to cite somebody. Once I've captured several dozen atomic notes on a topic and I want to write about it, my next step is to create an outline. Now elsewhere on the channel, I have other videos where I go into detail about my outlining process, but I'll summarize what I did for this particular article. So I basically just read through my atomic notes. It took about 10 or 15 minutes. And then I created a bullet point outline based on the key ideas inside of these notes. And the article should be about the types of generative art that are out there. I quickly listed out some types based on my research and I linked to some of the atomic or smaller notes inside of my Zettelkasten. And then I played around with the outline by moving around the different ideas as well. And in some cases, I added some context uh, by add linking to other atomic notes or by simply adding a note to myself 
about something to check. And I also used the hashtag outlines so I could quickly find this note later on. Then I went ahead and wrote the article. It took about an hour because I'd already researched much of the topics as part of my atomic or iterative writing. Once I'd written the article, I let it sit for a day and then I went back to see was there any missing facts or information to add. You'll also see that I formatted the article with Markdown. So I have one hashtag here for heading one, two hashtags here for heading two or subheadings. I have the hyperlinks using the Markdown syntax that I described previously. And I also have links uh, to external sources. I've cited an interviewee that I had originally put into one of my atomic notes and I'd put this in as a block quote. So once I was happy with the article, my final step then was to take it and grammar check it. I went a good grammar checker. So I currently use Grammarly, another tool that I profiled extensively on the channel. I've installed the desktop app uh, to my computer so I can just simply click on the Grammarly icon and it will automatically scan the article for grammar errors, typos and other mistakes. So in this case, there's not many because I've already fixed this particular article. Then my final step is to get it ready for publishing. So I have a couple of different options. So I can actually just copy this text and I could paste it into Google Docs. Alternatively, Obsidian enables me to export to a PDF. But occasionally what I like to do is open up the article in question in an app like Ulysses. Ulysses is another Markdown writing app. And that's the beauty of writing in Markdown that you can read Markdown files with uh, any Markdown editor. So you're not locked in to Obsidian or one writing tool. So I set up a keyboard shortcut for this, Command Shift E. You can customize this in Obsidian. So when I press this, it automatically opens up the article inside of uh, Ulysses. And you can see it's already formatted. It has my links, has my block quotes and so on. So again, I would just read through this to see if there's anything I want to change. Because I often find when you take something that you've written and you put it into a different tool, you may notice some errors that you missed the first time round. Uh, and Ulysses pretty much supports all of the markdown commands that I showed you at the start of the video. There's a couple of subtle differences. Uh, so if you get confused, just use the introduction tab on Ulysses and read their guide to Markdown Excel, but it's pretty much the same. The only differences relate to tables and comments. So once I'm finished editing the article in question, my final step is to publish it on my website or on WordPress or Substack or wherever the article in question is going. So I'll click on the share button and I can export it as a docx file, HTML, PDF, and so on. And I can publish it that way. Or alternatively, I can configure publishing directly to WordPress to Ghost or Medium. Now, these days I usually just uh, default to uh, exporting a HTML version because I find this is the easiest way to get a version that has no uh, formatting issues. So I would just copy this text uh, and then I would open up, uh, let's say Substack and then I can paste this into Substack and you can see it has all of my links and block quotes and formatting and even my YouTube video or I can paste it into Google Docs and it's again, it's correctly formatted. And then I could give this to somebody to publish on the site that I'm running. The article that I published did not include a table. However, suffice to say, including a table with your published article works pretty much the same. So here is the uh, markdown version of the table. Here is the formatted version. And again, I can just simply open this up in another markdown app and preview what it looks like. And actually in Ulysses, you can actually more easily edit the columns and rows in your table much more easily. And again, you can publish it in the same way. I run my content websites with WordPress. If you've used WordPress for any length of time, chances are you've encountered issues where it's pulled through weird formatting or it starts displaying code or there's some other formatting quirk on your posts. And again, this is the benefit of writing with Markdown. So I can just write it in my Markdown app and publish it directly to WordPress already formatted and laid out for the web. But if I don't want to connect my Markdown app to my WordPress site, I do have a couple of other options. So your first option is simply to install the Jetpack plugin and then turn on Markdown. And then you can go ahead and paste Markdown directly into your rich text editor. Your other option is just simply to paste the HTML directly into WordPress. So sometimes this is what I'll do. So all you do is open up new post, click on text, and then you just get the HTML from your Markdown editor. It will provide it for you. And then if you paste this in and then click on visual, you'll see it's automatically formatted. And again, you don't have to worry about the, uh, or WordPress applying any odd formatting quirks because you've done all of this outside of WordPress. 
This is good if you find a rich text editor and the block editor a little bit frustrating to use like I do. I hope you enjoyed this overview of my writing process with Markdown. As you can see, it's pretty easy to learn. It'll save you a lot of time and frustration if you write online. And Markdown pretty much works everywhere. There are lots of different apps that you can use to support your Markdown writing process too. I profiled those on the channel, but the ones that I use the most at the moment are Ulysses and Obsidian. And I have extensive videos where I profile them in detail as well. If you did enjoy this video, hit thumbs up. If you've got more questions about my writing process, let me know in the comments section below so I can record a follow-on video to help. And if you want to get more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.